Kate here from Dakota Ball Readers Australia. I'm excited because we've got a mini series called Celebrating Science of Reading Influences. There are so many amazing people doing work here in Australia and globally to spread the word of the science of teaching reading. And these people are really bridging that gap for our educators from that research to quality instruction and practice in our classrooms. So we've decided to celebrate them and connect our community with them because who wouldn't want to be on this journey with them? So sit back and enjoy. Each week we've got a different influencer that we're going to showcase and connect you with. Let's dive into our first one. Today we celebrate Jocelyn Seema from Jocelyn Seema Education. We just welcome you, Jocelyn, and thank you so much for joining us here at Decodable Readers Australia in our celebration time to celebrate the global influences, making an impact on our teachers, uh, not only here in Australia, but globally. And it's people like you that we just want to celebrate. So thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you so much, Camilla. I'm really humbled by that because I just really consider myself to be a teacher who has some things to share to make other teachers' lives a little easier. So, um, yeah, I'm very honoured to be included uh, in this series. Well, I know personally, Jocelyn, that you've made an impact on my journey. I, I feel that you just simplify some of the, the complex uh, understanding around reading science and, and you really know and understand what a teacher needs to continue on this reading science journey. So I wanted to ask you a few questions today. Firstly, can you tell us a little bit about your personal journey? So um, when I was a little girl and you said, what are you going to be when you grow up? The answer was a teacher, that was always a given. And so it shouldn't have been a surprise to anyone that I actually became a teacher. So I've taught in some of Australia's most disadvantaged schools, spent 10 years in the Northern Territory all up, working in from ages from creche and early childhood all the way to year six. Um, I've had a variety of roles, including teaching principal in a few schools and then and most recently working um, at a reasonably sized but extremely disadvantaged school. So um, the, the journey has been a learning curve that has been extremely steep at times. And I think that part of the driving factor for me, there's two, two arms, I guess. One of them is the social justice factor of making sure that everybody can read because we know that life outcomes for people who have low levels of literacy are impaired on so many levels. But in order to make that happen, we need to support our people in the classroom who work really hard, also trying to work towards that same goal. And our teaching role is really complex. So my goal and my work for teachers is to simplify it, to make it easy, break it into small chunks. Well, hang on, not easy, nothing's ever easy, but easier and a little more simple so we can break it into small chunks. And you don't have to, you know, there's that saying, you don't have to eat the whole elephant in one bite. Well, you don't have to develop every bit of your practice in one day that's when we get overloaded and we all want to quit and you know go and have another job so we don't want that we want our passionate teachers to stay in the classroom so my goal is to provide what teachers need in terms of helping them build their practice so that they can feel successful and their students can and I wish I met you 20 years ago if you were in this same position because coming out of university it, it's scary and um, back in those times, there weren't some of the things that are happening now in really understanding the learning to read process and having that guide on the side that can really break it down into manageable steps. And even us teachers thinking, you know, we have to be superheroes and know it all. Um, that's, that's another positive about um, following influences like yourself in um, being able to gain that knowledge in small manageable parts and practice that implementation and then coming back to you to learn a little bit more. But can you tell me who, this might be a hard question, but who's influenced your journey in the reading science world? Well, so many people. It is really hard because every person I've met 
who you know had something to teach I've grabbed it with both hands and, and integrated it into my own understanding but I think it really first started um, I had a university lecturer who um, in the days of whole language when she was told you are not allowed to teach phonics she did a very naughty thing and she shut the door and taught it anyway and so she was a passionate advocate um, for she wouldn't have called it evidence-based practice then to her um, that would have just made sense and she was a passionate advocate for children who struggle so she was my first example of stepping out onto the limb and so often we can feel like the rest of our school or our profession is over here and we're on our own and it's just us and it's hard to keep momentum and so I think that people who've influenced me the most have been the ones who have shown me that it's okay to be out, to feel like you're out on the limb and actually embrace that. And I've been very fortunate in my early teaching life that I had people around me who knew things. And to be really honest, I got lucky. I'm not smarter than anyone else. I didn't get, have a better degree than anyone else or work in a better school than anyone else. I just got lucky. And so the people who have been around me um, so there's a, we had a curriculum coach who was like, nope, we're doing it this way. This is not negotiable. And, and at first everyone was a bit, oh my gosh, that's a bit scary. And then we started to see the results and said, oh, okay, now I get it. Um, people like Joanne Duna from Get Reading, Write and Training for 24 seven. She was one of my early influences. Um, people like Lorraine Hammond and Alison Clark and Lynn Stone. And, you know, I've been really fortunate to meet many of these people in real life and was totally fangirling when I did. Um, but it's also the teachers who, who message me and say, you know, I tried this and it really worked and I've adjusted it and I've made it my own. And they have ideas that I've never thought of. So I think that recognition that we're always growing we're always building our professional knowledge and learning and nobody has all the answers so being prepared to a be wrong sometimes and try things out and go oh that didn't work and feel that that's okay is important as well um, and I'm also I guess influenced by the extremely passionate parents whose children have had difficulty and they will not give up. And I'm so fortunate now to be on the board of Code Red Dyslexia Network and support that organisation. And there's so many people working all in the same direction to achieve the same goal. Sometimes we get there slightly differently, but um, I'm constantly just inspired and, and learn from, from other people. Mm, I must admit the names that you dropped earlier huge influences in my world too. And we're lucky enough to interview a few of those um, wonderful people that are making uh, change in our schools. But I liked what you said where there are actually teachers still in our classrooms today that know the right way to teach and are on the journey, but stuck in schools that are still whole language based. And um, these are the ones that I try and connect with influencers like you to say, you're doing the right thing, just keep doing it. It might be a tough journey if you're in a school that hasn't embarked on that change yet. We know it's coming. Um, so can you tell me how our listeners and followers can connect with you and, and what to expect on their journey with you? Because I know I've joined the bus, um, but what does that actually mean? So being on the bus is about, you know, in my mind, when I came up with this idea, it was about there's a bus driving down the street and it's a joyful place and it's a place where people are learning and great things are happening. And then there's people who are so excited that they're yelling out the windows to everyone else going, come on, come on, come on the bus. This is going to be great. And so I, I wanted to move away from that us versus them. You either know everything or you don't. Um, idea and be just more welcoming so all you have to be is curious and you're on the bus and you're referring I think to um, the new Facebook group uh, on the science of reading bus um, group but you can also connect with me through Jocelyn Seema education that's my website where I have a weekly blog and I have content every week really simple practical information and ideas that you can implement straight away so you don't have to have read all the books or done all the courses to be able to get started but if you want more professional learning I run what I call teach along courses and so a teach along is um, again bringing it back to that bite-sized chunk it's an online course 
where we don't do eight hours of straight learning. I mean, everyone's sat in the PL session for a whole day and gone, well, I'm really tired at the end now. And I saw that one activity that looks like it could be good, but I have no idea how to put that into practice. And so you walk away and you never do anything with it. And it's such a waste of time. So I didn't want what I was offering to be like that. Um, so you, we have little chunks. And then at the moment, I'm running a 12-week program, which is quite long. So in it, we have implementation weeks where you just get to focus on action. But um, I'll stop talking about that. But generally, um, I, yeah, I just really want to respond to people's needs. So I have the blog, we have the teach alongs, we have the Facebook group. Um, and I would encourage people to reach out if you need something, let me know, because I really do feel like my purpose is to be here to serve our community of teachers and help people connect and feel like you're not alone because you're not. There are so many more of us who've been where you are now. If you're feeling that you, you have this little niggly voice that's telling you that there's a different way um, and you just either you don't know what to do to get started or you're in a school as you said where perhaps the the more updated practice has not been embraced yet that can be really hard so get in touch and join with others you need a tribe well what i do love about all of that there's something for everyone in there of your style of what you want i, I love following the posts i know you've got your, your courses it it just opens up a world for teachers that they can access even if their school's not quite there yet so i do love that and your relationship of being a teacher and a principal, you know the journey as well personally. So that that's, uh, resonates well with me as well. Now, we've kept it very positive, but I have one question. Have you had any frustrations along the way or any negative thoughts, um, something that really uh, has bothered you about the journey, um, whether it be from you know the parents or the lack of support. What what sort of frustrations have you come along, uh, either in your journey now or as a principal or teacher? I think probably my biggest frustration has not been at a school level. Um, having been a school leader makes it easy to to influence, but professionally, the role of our professional organisations in influencing us is really important. And when there's such a mismatch between what the evidence is, and you and I know we're not talking about, oh, two and a half years ago, four people did a study and therefore we're all gonna change. This is 30 plus years of thousands of studies that tell us what needs to happen. And our professional organizations not representing us, claiming that they speak for teachers. And then actually, no, because there's a lot of us who want change and, and not having that representation can be quite frustrating. So whether it's a representative body or whether it's a professional organisation where we're supposed to be able to turn to for ongoing support, um, I think that's one of my big frustrations because the possibilities for good are enormous and they're just not taken up. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree with you there. I just want to thank you so much for your time and just opening up our listeners, our followers. Um, they know how to get in touch with you. We'll put all of our details in the, um, the post. So how to find your website, how to find your Facebook page and just keep up the good work. I know I'll continue the, the journey on the bus um, for sure. And we'll, we'll cross post and we'll share because we're all making an impact and I know that there are teachers out there that just value this so much and it's so nice to be able to connect them with the right influences on the right journey. And last but not least, I just love the bus analogy because it's not about the destination. I mean, yes, we want to improve outcomes, but we can do that on the journey by supporting each other. And there's lots of pit stops on that journey on that bus. So your analogy just resonates with so many people and being able to have little manageable sessions with you to then go and put, implement them into the classroom and get that feedback is wonderful. So thank you so much, Jocelyn, for your time. And we'll make sure that we connect as many as we can to wonderful influencers like you.
Yeah, fantastic. Thank you, Camilla. And thank you for the work that Decodable Readers Australia does making these resources accessible. I think one of the huge challenges we have is getting resources that support really good, strong learning for our kids. Um, and so knowing that Decodable Readers Australia is there on the journey with teachers is fantastic. So thank you as well. Wonderful. Thank you.